So here is my uh, my Ford ML10 with the ELS control. I started out uh, thinking that I should uh, make a new motor um, system um, for the machine, but ended up now, as you see, with the guards and motorizing assembly as original with the original motor. Pulley system, three uh, pulleys. And with back here, I get a uh, oh, little bit in excess of this speed, it's 819 or almost 900 RPM top speed. This is the cast iron uh, directly, um, a spindle running in cast iron headstock, so I think uh, that would be okay. And then um, I also intended to uh, motorize the x axis, haven't done that yet, so now I have the original uh, system for the cross feed. But for the longitudinal axis, I um, uh, also then replaced the lead screw actually, and then have mounted instead of gears a pulley system to a stepper motor and then an encoder here. So that now this runs through the ELS. Um, I can also then use it with a hand feed, no problem. Um, then I also have uh, modified the tailstock. Uh, to this uh, configuration I did for the ML7, also shown. And I um, have now mounted this uh, rather long, long stick out um, three jaw. I have some other um, shorter stick out um, four jaw and three jaw that I will mount permanently, I think. But this would, will do for now at least. And then just the cover here. I took away the um, granite um, here because foolishly I've uh, doubled up on the granite so it, uh, I mean two granite stones on top of one, is, uh, one another and uh, they were not uh, coming apart so um, stuck to one another glued together and that became um, a nuisance really when mounting this motor because it has to be mounted to specific height and, and, and the distance uh, which, um, well, the stone interfered with that, so I just mounted it uh, to a, um, a bench here, or uh, let's say a bench top, uh, a wooden bench top. Um, I have, however, have also then filled up the bed with uh, uh, epoxy granite. Uh, so it should be a little bit uh, more sturdy also and heavy. So bringing you around here, you can see the end collar here mounted um, to the spindle. So rotating the spindle will drive the encoder uh, through a timing belt. And then I have the drive system instead of the gearing here with two equally sized pulleys here also mounted to a stepper motor and the controller is over here or rather the controller is up here but the, the driver stepper motor driver and um, else it's just like standard bog standard apart from the link belt i opted to go for the link belt um, instead of the normal belt. Of course, uh, this track back bed is with these holes here that allows, um, let's say, division or dividing. Two different, I think it's five, four, six, eight, and twelve I made. Don't remember anymore. And then this is a quick change, so to speak, to a post system. Um, tailstock modification. So to have an in integral um, ejector. And also then avoid this, I think, a uh, little bit in the way action when the, the barrel then interferes with your hand. And then here I have the extra hand bill which can be okay to to have for for um, a manual feed i also have a an extra bearing here bearing here 
so it doesn't only run on this um, uh, bushing, but also a ball bearing inside here. And the reason I have this two-tone finish, um, I mean gray, gr green here and gray here, is that I started out without these covers and also the motorizing assembly. Initially thought that I should um, uh, try this, um, let's say, treadmill motor uh, thing, um, which I eventually did not do. When I got uh, a good um, buy on uh, the covers and uh, motorizing assembly with a normal uh, one-phase motor. But um, these are both hammerite, so I already had painted that in hammerite grey. And uh, uh, the paint then um, uh, is uh, not silicon based, but at least uh, it's um, silicon in the paint. So uh, you need to strip it down before you repaint. Now, of course, then I had already painted this and then acquired this, so although not really nice to look at these two colors together, it's not worth the trouble to either do this, which is original, or do this once more just for the purpose of having it in one color, in my eyes at least. Also, then, like uh, now, I'm running it with the normal uh, one face motor. And that's what you see here. So um, I can give it a run here. Just try an effort here to show you. For those of you familiar with the ELS uh, from Rocketronics, it's um, very very simple to use unit. And in this case, only the uh, set axis control is is uh, mounted. For the motor so i have no um, uh, access to the let's say the full um, uh, cyclus uh, control which this allows namely the both x and z so um, swapping between these different programs means that i can use this for example turning uh, here um, setting the feed rate just like normal and the distance this um, set p here so if i go down here i can set the distance for example now five um, um, uh, millimeters to the side when i start the motor at top speed <laughs> 898 rpm. So you can see here you have fast and a slow jog. You also have uh, something called set off, which means that if I use this button, I can use the hand wheel directly. You can now use the hand wheel to advance the tool. And if I use the jog buttons, I can either jog fast or slow of course all these settings can be changed to your liking we did more hefty cuts made this uh, use of this tool holder uh, and then adopted another tool one millimeter lower so that it fits here and I thought I could try to use this uh, to just show 
and the threading possibility with the one axis setup. In this case, of course, what you need to do is that um, when the thread has, or when the system has, or tool has reached its leftmost position, if you do a right hand thread and stops, you have a setup time that you can program in yourself. I've set it to one and a half seconds, and then it displays the ELS displays extract tool. So then I extract the tool and then it moves automatically back to starting position. This is the ELS3 uh, display. Uh, I cannot, um, uh, let's say, go further out so to get the whole front because then I can't read what's on the display. But anyhow, I've changed to between the different functions from turning, and I have gearbox left and right. But I've set up then for an external thread. And the feed rate in this case, the pitch, one millimeter. And I have a set of distance at what, 10 millimeters. And I can set here now the start position. And then when I start the spindle, you see the RPM. 528 and then when I start the sequence it says now retract so this is the time that I have to do another one to retract the tool and this is set up in a menu here I have uh, lots of different functions that I can set here all these different uh, scroll through so you can see all the settings for the feed um, motors and um, correctly set up lead screw lead screw being um, 3.175 is uh, 8 tpi and we go back again to the waiting period this means that i have one and a half seconds uh, for this uh, tool retraction that can be set from half a second or less up to as long as you want. So let's uh, just do a quick run here to see how it looks. The system allows for two channel uh, control, two axis. Uh, the threading sequence is fully automated, uh, cycle control, both axis. In this case, with only one channel motorized and, and controlled, you need to as uh, is evident, you need to retract the tool for each uh, pass that is finished and wait for the tool to, to go to the resting or the start position and then do another pass. If you had the two channel, of course, uh, then um, or two axes, I mean, then you would uh, set it up uh, appropriately so that you will then, for example, say, say you want uh, uh, a thread depth of uh, half a millimeter on this, uh, on this uh, here then uh, you can divide that into let's say 20 passes and then it'll be uh, 19 passes where it is divided um, uh, into equal amount plus then one finish pass in this case at least uh, you can do these as many passes as you want and uh, i took it very uh, let's say uh, at a very liberal pace here <laughs>
I had to make uh, some, um, let's say, blind passes also because I didn't exactly remember to read the cor uh, dial correctly. But it went okay. So I'm trying to make a thread now, 1.5 millimeter lead, 12 millimeter long. And I'm setting a uh, dial here so that I can follow the in-feed, which will be minimal.